Hello everyone, welcome to Math is Fun. Our lesson for today is all about finding a missing term in a proportion, direct, inverse, and partitive. Let's define first what is a proportion. When we say proportion, it is a statement of equality between two ratios. Each part of a proportion is a term. The first and the last terms are called extremes, while the second and the third terms are called means. First is we're going to discuss about the types of proportion. The first type of proportion is a direct proportion. When we say direct proportion, as one quantity increases, the other quantity increases at the same rate and vice versa. Or, as one quantity decreases, the other quantity also decreases. Here are some examples of direct proportion. Salary to the number of hours of work. Cost of electricity to kilowatt hour of consumption. Number of cent tax messages to amount of postpaid load. Fair and distance of destination. The second type of proportion is inverse proportion. One quantity increases as the other quantity decreases at the same rate and vice versa. Examples of inverse proportion. Speed varies inversely with time of travel because the faster we go, the shorter the time of travel. Number of workers to the number of days the work to be done. The third type of proportion is partitive proportion. What is a partitive proportion? When we say partitive proportion, it is a whole that is divided into parts that are proportional to the given ratio. Examples of partitive proportion 18 hectares land was divided into the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3. The 10 cakes were shared to the girls and boys with a ratio of 2 is to 3. In a given proportion, when a term is missing, it can be solved using cross multiplication in fraction form or by multiplying the means and extremes in colon form. To understand fully our topic for today on how to find the missing term in a proportion, let's study the following examples. First, x is to 5 is equal to 9 is to 15. The missing term is x. So we're going to find the value of x. This is in colon form. So we're going to multiply the means and the extremes. So we're going to multiply x times 15. The answer is equal to 15x. Just put together the number and letter, then write first the number before the letter. Next is we're going to multiply the means. 5 times 9 is equal to 45. Then, to get the value of x, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of x, which is equal to 15. So, 15x divided by 15 is equal to x. 45 divided by 15 is equal to 3. Therefore, the value of our missing term is 3. To check whether our answer is correct or not, we're going to use the value of x, which is 3, into our original equation. So, 3 is to 5 is equal to 9 is to 15. 
multiply the extremes and the means 3 times 15 is equal to 45 and 5 times 9 is equal to 45. Therefore, our answer is correct. Another example. 5 over B is equal to 4 over 12. This is in a fraction form. So we're going to use the cross multiplication. 5 times 12 is equal to 60. B times 4 is equal to 4B. Then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 4 to make the equation balance. So, 4B divided by 4 is equal to B and 60 divided by 4 is equal to 15. Therefore, the value of our missing term is 15. To check whether our answer is correct or not, we're going to use the value of b into our original equation. 5 is to 15 is equal to 4 is to 12. Then we're going to multiply the extremes and the means. 5 times 12 is equal to 60 and 15 times 4 is equal to 60. Therefore, our equation is balanced and we get the correct answer. Okay, why is it a direct proportion? It is a direct proportion because if 5 is x and 15 is y, to the other equation also, if 4 is x and 12 is y, as x decreases, also y decreases. So this is a direct proportion. Next example, 5 over n is equal to 15 over 12. Again, this is in a fraction form, so we're going to use a cross multiplication. 5 times 12 is equal to 60, n times 15 is equal to 15n. Then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 15 to make the equation balance. So, 15n divided by 15 is equal to n, and 60 divided by 15 is equal to 4. Therefore, the value of our missing term is 4. Let's check if our answer is correct. 5 is to 4 is equal to 15 is to 12. So, we're going to multiply the extremes and the means. 5 times 12 is equal to 60. 4 times 15 is equal to 60. Then, here, our equation is balanced. Therefore, our answer is correct. Why we called it an inverse proportion? Okay, if 5 is x and 4 is y, so the other equation also 15 is x and 12 is y. As x increases, y is decreases. Therefore, this is an example of inverse proportion. For our next example, we're going to analyze the problem. A glass of jar has 50 chocolates. Sasha, Alexa, Kim, and Joy will share the chocolates in the ratio of 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. How many chocolates will each one of them get? Our problem is a partitive proportion. To solve a partitive proportion, we're going to follow some steps. Step 1 are the parts of the ratio. In our problem, the ratio is 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. So, we're going to add all the parts. 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 plus 2 is equal to 9 plus 1 is equal to 10. So, the sum of the parts in our ratio is equal to 10. Step 2, 
divide the whole by the sum of the ratio. So we have here 50 chocolates. Then we're going to divide 50 by 10. So 50 divided by 10 is equal to 5. Step 3. Multiply the parts of the ratio by the quotient in step 2. So for the first part in our ratio is 4. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Then the next part is 3. 3 times 5 is equal to 15. The next part is 2. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. And the last part is 1. 1 times 5 is equal to 5. If I'm going to add all the products here, 20 plus 15 is equal to 35 plus 10 is equal to 45 plus 5 is equal to 50. Okay, this is equal to 50 chocolates. Therefore, Sasha will get 20 chocolates. Alexa, she will get 15 chocolates. Kim will get 10 chocolates. And Joy will get 5 chocolates. So, this is the way how we're going to solve a partitive proportion. I hope that you understand our lesson for today and thank you for watching.